November 18th, 2018, November 22nd, 2017, we lost one of our daughters just a few days less than a year ago. The pain was searing, and it still is. How in the world can we thank God? On what basis can I thank God? And from the bottom of my heart, I thank God. Obviously not because of the loss. But because as I look at the word of God, God gives us profound, rock solid reasons why we can praise God. Why we can thank him. But sometimes it takes very intense things to get us to acknowledge that we need him. Because so much of the time we think we can handle it. We think we got it. And we don't. Oh, I've got my brains. Oh, I've got my hands. Oh, I've got my beauty. Oh, I've got my education. Or oh, I've got my money. And we think we really don't need God. We all need those times to be lifted up. But in order to be lifted up, we need to acknowledge where we are. But when we do, and we come across a person that is uh, uh, heavy, that is uh, famous, that is powerful, and we hear about that person, and maybe perhaps we're next to them, we get uplifted a little bit. This happens all the time when people go to conferences or what have you and there's this great person that's going to be speaking. He's an awesome person and uh, usually that person is introduced by pointing out all the outstanding accomplishment that that person has done, right? Somebody gets introduced, this person has a PhD from Harvard. He has 10 best-selling books. He has been the president of such and such for 20 years. And he has been next to, and we hear of all the accomplishments. It's like, wow, I'm in the presence of such a great person. There's kind of like a little uplifting that happens. And then, and then, if we're able to stay next to that great person, like, wow, we, you know, we can stay there. Well, we have Jesus Christ. Who he is from eternity past into eternity future. He is God and he will never, ever change. He is the great I am. And he is our hope. Our rock solid hope. So no matter what we go through. We can be comforted by him. In a way that only God can comfort, right? St. Corinthians chapter 1 says... Be ye comforted with the comfort that only God can give. And so, in this Thanksgiving season, uh, I want us all to turn to God. But sometimes, we need a little bit more understanding. Do you need uplifting? Do you have someone that wants to commit suicide? They're that bad off? They have no hope. And they're all torn up in life. How can you encourage them? By just saying some kind words. And come on it's going to be okay. We need more substance than that. And the Bible. The revealed word of God. Gives us. What we need. Maybe you yourself are there. And you need. The word. Of God. Maybe it's your parents, maybe it's your siblings, maybe it's your children, maybe it's your neighbor, your co-worker, your schoolmate. 
I'm going to be going over a couple of words in the Old Testament that are translated thanksgiving. And uh, these words are very instructive for us to learn what it means to give thanks. Uh, <laughs> there's many, many, there can be 20 sermons on thanksgiving. So today is going to be a very abbreviated treatment, okay? But these two words are, are really, really packed with meaning. Uh, one of them is yada, close to Yoda, but not Yoda, yada. <laughs> and the other one is toda, yada and toda, okay? And with these two words, we find out that we need to be in the state, listen to this, we need to be in the state of acknowledging God's dependable, loyal love and offer a sacrifice to him. We need to be in this state of being, in this state of thinking and realizing and acknowledging that God's love is dependable from generation to generation, no matter what we're going through. And as we look at these words, you'll see what I'm talking about. They're a help to me. And I pray that they're a help to, to everyone, my whole family, to all of us. So first, yada. Yada. It's an interesting name, right? Yada is translated Thanksgiving. Uh, you need to know that in the Hebrew Old Testament, there was no word for Thanksgiving the way we know it now. Right? The way we know it now. This word that is translated Thanksgiving, and I'll show you. In fact, turn to uh, Psalm 100, one of the Psalms that was read. The, sub, the superscript is a psalm of thanksgiving. That's the superscript. And the word there for thanksgiving is this yara. This word uh, is not really thanksgiving. It's really confession. It's really acknowledgement. Right? Uh, that's what it means. To acknowledge sin, to acknowledge the goodness of God, the greatness of God, is speaking out the truth about maybe our sin or the truth about God. You see? Uh, for instance, turn to uh, Psalm 32. And as I said, I'm going to be going through several or just several passages. Uh, Psalm 32, this is one of the penitential psalms that David was after he had sinned greatly. Uh, Psalm 32 and verse 5. I acknowledged my sin. I yada my sin. I confessed. I acknowledged. Right? And to confess means what? To confess means I'm going to tell you the truth that perhaps you already know. When we confess our sins to God, he already knows our sins, but we tell him the same thing he already knows. We confess. We acknowledge the reality of whatever is there. If it's sin, Lord, here, and that's the word that David used in Psalm 32, verse 5. I yada my sin. Right? That's the same word that is used in Psalm 100, the song of thanksgiving, the psalm of yara. But here it is the confession, the acknowledgement of who God is. You see? And when we understand that, then when we go through horrendous pain, then we go back to, wait a minute, I need to acknowledge, who is God? What has he done? Because that's what's going to take me through. If I don't know that, then I concentrate on the world. I concentrate on things that never can heal, can never really, really help on the long run. So it's very, very important to yada. God, to acknowledge who he is. And so I'm going to go through real quickly through Psalm 100. As you see, it's only five verses, so we won't go long. <laughs> Psalm 
But this word is used several times in this psalm. So let me read it. Uh, Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful singing. Know that the Lord himself is God. He, uh, it is he who has made us and not ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gate with thanksgiving, with yada. And I'll go over why is that important. And his court was praise, a different word for praise. Giving thanks again, yada, giving thanks, yada, to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good, his everlasting, uh, his loving kindness is everlasting. And his faithfulness to all generations. When it says at the very beginning, verse 1, shout, joyfully shout. Uh, the Hebrew there is what's called a hifil stem, a hifil verb. And that is be in the state of. There's, a, there's an invitation. Hey, be in the state of what? Be in the state of joyfully, uh, shouting joyfully to the Lord. And it says all the earth, all creation. All creation needs to be like in this mode. In this state of being. Well, when you're going through horrendous pain, how in the world can you be there? But it's an imperative. It's a command. Be in that state. And when we know about who God is, the result is that we begin to serve him. You see? Serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness when I'm going through all this pain? Hmm. Do you see now why it is very important to understand what in the world? How can I move from this horrendous pain? The psalmist is, 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 is saying, do it. Be in the state. Uh, come before him with joyful singing. Not just glad. Now sing. Hmm. So many suffer during the holidays, right? Because the families are broken. Because there's been massive loss. And we need to be realistic. But here the psalmist is saying, uh, do it. Be in that state. First he begins, know that the Lord himself is God. Know that Yahweh, that's the Hebrew. Know that Yahweh himself is Elohim. Elohim at the end is plural. El is God. A plural God. Some had said, you see, there is the uh, room for the Holy Trinity. Three persons but one God. And it could be something like that. But I think Elohim is more used what's called a, a, a majestic plural. This adds greatness. It adds weight. In other words, here is the true God. Because, you know, when the president or the queen or somebody is talking about self and they don't want to, they don't want to use I, they use we, the government, even though it might be the queen who's issuing the order or whatever. No, we, the majesty, the greatness. Well, here, I think what he's saying is Yahweh is the only true majestic God period that's why we need to praise him no matter what and then he goes on to say huh, he's the one that made us not ourselves he made us God is the creator of all that is and we we are merely his sheep of his pasture we are his sheep of his pastor this world does not belong to us we don't even belong to ourselves he is the creator of all that is that can put much much into perspective in all of life you see but we need to understand that so the psalmist begins to say God is the only true God and he is the creator of all that is he is the owner and then he says continuing enter the, his gates the gates were the place where there was commerce, 
and justice was dealt. When people came to the city, they came to the gates, and in the gates, that's where you had the administration, the judges were sitting, and you needed to, if some, you were guilty of something, that's where you were tried. His, enter his gates, enter the place of justice with Yara. In other words, when you come to the presence of God, you need to be acknowledging, you need to be confessing the greatness of God. You see. Enter with this verbal acknowledgement of who he is to enter his presence. Enter his gates with yara, confession of who he is, and then he says his courts with praise. Uh, the court was now the bigger place of, uh, of worship. Uh, and that's what he's saying now. You enter the gates with acknowledging God and then enter the courts with praise. Uh, the word there is uh, acts of praise. In the courtyard is where uh, sacrifices would take place. The bulls would be sacrificed. And so when he said enter the court with praise, enter the place of worship with deeds worthy to praise God. You see, that's what he's saying. Again, in the midst of pain, I need to enter the courts and doing deeds of that honor God? I raised that question of myself. Can I? With all the losses and all that we go through, can I? I'm being commanded to do so. Enter the gates with acknowledging God. And enter the courts with deeds praising God. And then again, give thanks, give yara to him again. Now this is an imperative again, a command. Acknowledge who he is. And by that you will bless his name, that is you will enrich the name of God. You will attribute to him what is due. He's still given, not giving us the reasons why. Right? He started by saying he's the creator. But the last verse. Here's the reason why. For. F-O-R. Here's the reason. Here's the explanation. For the Lord is good. The Lord is not bad. The Lord is not evil. The Lord is not just out to get you. The Lord is not just out to go cause pain on you. No. He is good. How? How can you say that? His loving kindness is everlasting. Loving kindness means loyal love. That means... He's going to do kindness and what's best for you and for me, whatever it costs him. It does not matter if it causes him hurt, affliction, even rejection, even killing him. But he's going to do the best for you and me. His loyal love. No matter what. From everlasting to everlasting. You are hesed. You are loving. Mm. And you can depend on that. You can utterly, completely depend on him now and forever to do the best, even if it hurts him. His faithfulness to all generations. When we get to be a hundred years old, we can count on his faithfulness. His utter, complete dependability to do what? To do what is best. That's what we have in the gospel. That's what we have in Jesus Christ. But you see, because we don't understand, we get off, we get thrown off by lesser things. You see, 
And we need to come back to the cross and say, God was willing to die? God was willing to give his only begotten son? God, I, I, I don't understand God. How can you allow me to go through this suffering? And yet you gave your son to save me. I'm left with either being very angry with God or bowing down in utter worship of his ways that are far, far beyond me and say, God, you love me so? Yes, yes. Then based on that, I'm going to yada. I'm going to confess. I'm going to acknowledge God's loyal love. Right? So that's the first word, yada. The second one is toda. Now toda has the same meaning. To confess, to acknowledge only yada. Uh, to, uh, toda now has the uh, use in the sacrificial system. This word uh, uh, includes a giving of sacrifice in saying, God, you're so good to me. Here, I'm going to give this Toda. Now, what's interesting about Toda is this. It was a sacrifice that was brought uh, in thanksgiving to God. It's, it's translated thanksgiving, and I'll, we'll look at some passages. But this sacrifice... Part of it was given to the Lord and part of it, listen to this, part of it was given to the people and they were all to eat together from that sacrifice. You see? And so a worshiper came and he was so happy that there was peace between him and God and he was saying, God, you're so good. I'm going to give this uh, a toda and, and, and the poor, the down and out, would be encouraged and literally, literally taste the fajitas, taste the ribs, taste the, you know, barbecue. When somebody was praising God, giving a toda, you see, uh, toda was given in many occasions, one, the forgiveness of sins, uh, but another just being appreciative of God's provisions. And so they would give a toda. So uh, let me uh, go through a couple of passages on that. Um, again, as I said, it was a term employed uniquely in reference to the sacrificial system in Israel. Uh, let me quote from uh, Alan P. Ross, one of my professors, wrote a book. Uh, he says, the peace offering was a shared meal, and the peace offering was a thanksgiving offering. A shared meal in which the offerer celebrated with those assembled in the sanctuary the benefits of peaceful relationship with God. This ritual was unique in that the people received part of the sacrifice as a communal meal. This was, in effect, acknowledging that when a gracious benefit was received from God, it had to be shared with others. Generosity was the evidence of gratitude. Thus man, uh, thus man, people, poor and needy, included, participate, uh, included, participated in the bounty of the peace offering. You see? So when somebody came this, gave this toda, other people actually enjoyed the benefits of this brother having been forgiven or having this great relationship with God. That was Old Testament thanksgiving. You see? Um, so, look at Psalm 26. Psalm 26. Um, let me read through it and make a few comments quickly. Uh, Psalm 27. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, and I have trusted in the Lord without uh, wavering. Examine me, O Lord, and try me. Test my mind and my heart. You see... Your loving kindness, that's the same word in Psalm 100. Your loyal love, 
You're constantly doing what is best for me regardless. Your loving kindness before my eyes. And I have walked in your truth. God, this is constantly in my mind. That you do everything and everything for my best interest. No matter what. I don't understand it, but you do what's best. I do not sit with the deceitful men. Nor will I go with pretenders. I hate the assembly of evildoers. And I will not sit with the wicked. I shall wash my hands in innocence. And I will go about your altar, O Lord. Now, here's seven. Here's verse seven where I want to point out. That I may proclaim with the voice of Toda. That's the Hebrew word Toda. I'm giving this sacrifice. I'm acknowledging your goodness. I'm acknowledging your attributes. But it comes with this Toda, with this sacrifice. And declare all your wonders. Oh Lord, I love your habitation of your house, the habitation of your house. And the place where you, uh, your glory dwells. Meaning, I love being in worship with my fellow believers. I love being in your presence, God. Do not take my soul away along with the sinners. Nor my life with the men of bloodshed. In whose hands is a wicked scheme. And whose right hand is full of bribes. That is in contrast to Toda. The, the, the wicked people, they bring bribes. How can I manipulate? How can I use even religion? I cannot, how can I use God for my benefit? No, that's a bribe. In contrast to that, I bring a toda. I bring this sacrifice that I acknowledge who you are. And people benefit. Other people benefit from that thanksgiving, that toda. Turn to Psalm 95. Psalm 95. Uh, again, Toda is what's used there. Psalm 95. Oh, come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. There it is. The rock of our salvation. Let us come before him, uh, his presence with Toda. That's the Hebrew word. With this sacrifice, with this thanksgiving, where we're acknowledging the goodness of God, but I'm also bringing a sacrifice that other people can eat from it and enjoy my praising God. It's not just words. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is, is a great God and a great king above all gods, in whose hand are the depths of the earth, the peaks of the mountains are also his also. The sea is his for it was he who made it. And his hand formed the dry land. Here again acknowledging who God is. You see brothers and sisters that's what we all need. Especially when we're going through hard time. Who is God? Who is God? Let me acknowledge his goodness. His loyalty. Let me keep that in my mind. It's food for the soul. It's food for the mind. It's food for the spirit. You see? And so the psalmist is saying, let us come before his presence with Toda, with thanksgiving. And then we already know, what did Jesus give? What did Jesus give? He left heaven and took on flesh. He left heaven and took on flesh. So that he would literally give his own body as Toda. Do we understand that? Do we understand? He gave his own body as Toda, praising his father. And we are all benefits from it. We are all beneficiaries of his Toda. Now and forever, not just today. Now and forever. Your loving kindness. It's from everlasting. 
Your faithfulness from generation to generation to generation. For all eternity. We can depend on his goodness. You see. And so. Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13 in the New Testament. Um, there's many, many passages that we can look at. Uh, this is by way of application. Hebrews 13, verse 13 and following. Hebrews 13, verse 13. So let us go out to him outside the camp. Bearing his reproach. Uh, the burnt offering and those offered for sin were burned outside the camp. Well, Jesus gave up his body as a sacrifice for us. So he says, let's go out there with him and bear his reproach. In other words, let's talk about him to others. If they reject us, they reject us. But here is the truth. This is our salvation. Salvation from hell. Salvation from the damnation. Salvation from the righteous wrath of God. Jesus has delivered us. For, he, for, uh, for here we do not have a lasting city. But we are seeking the city which is to come. This earth is not home. We will never ever ever find complete happiness in this earth. We can buy a thousand million new cars, a thousand million new whatever. It will never, ever fulfill our soul. Only God can. Only Jesus Christ can. So he's saying, let's not live for this world. Verse 15. Through him then, through Jesus then, let us continually offer up sacrifice of praise to God. That is, that is, that is. The fruit of the lips that give thanks to his name. And if we apply the Old Testament yada and toda. We say we're going to acknowledge the goodness of God. And, and give something. Sacrifice something. So that others will benefit from it. That's thanksgiving. So, application number one, go out. Reach out to others. You know, the holidays are terrible. People are hurting really bad. They might pretend. And, and people, we all get used to pretending, no? The whole world is pretending. And we have all kinds of social media that we can pretend, especially pretend. And we get so used to it. No, no. Go out and reach out with the truth of the gospel. Bring people to the light. That, that was application number one. Reach out with the gospel. Number two, focus on the things of heaven and not on earth. It's a paradoxical thing. I, I don't know. I mean, God is, he's weird sometimes. Uh, he uses the craziest thing to bring us happiness. And it's so odd. So opposite of what we think. So here when we say focus on the things of heaven not on earth. It's just amazing that the more we focus on the things of God. The happier we become. I mean <laughs> it's crazy. But that's the way it is. Jesus said he who has found his life will lose it. But he who loses it for my sake will keep it. You see? But it, it's different than what the world thinks. But here we're being told uh, we don't have a lasting city in this, in this earth. And the more we try to focus to find happiness on, in this earth, forget it. The more desperate and the more empty we become. That was application number two. Number three, give thanks, acknowledge, and give honor to God. Give honor to God. In the Old Testament, when they gave Toda, it literally says, this is what honors God. 
When you give Toda, when you give this verbal acknowledgement and then a, a sacrifice to go along with it so that others can benefit. That's why, you know, Thanksgiving dinners, there probably should be like 10, 20 turkeys out there. I don't know. There should be like 10 gallons of gravy. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but we should be giving and expressing the goodness of God. And reaching out with the gospel to those that are lost and broken. And they get benefit forever through Jesus Christ. Will you? Will you? I know it's difficult. I'm, my whole family's still in pain. Horrendous pain. But God is good because His loyal love, His loyal love is dependable now and forever. God, God, God is our life. God is our life. And we need to trust Him and turn to Him every moment, every hour, every day. Heavenly Father, thank You for Your Word. Thank You that so You richly bless us in giving us Your Word, Your living Word, Your church, Your written Word, Jesus Christ, the living Word. Father, we, we ask for Your help, Lord, in in living out the truth. Uh, help us to remember Lord. Help us to turn to you. To look at your word. To live by it God. Father and. When we come across people that are very wounded and lost. May we have compassion and mercy the way you have compassion and mercy upon us. Father, may they come to know the Lord Jesus Christ in a very, very personal way. Not just intellectual knowledge, but as a person who loves them. Thank you, Father, for all your goodness. We praise your name now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. So let my love be